Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are so. From the magical city of Miami, it's time for Braves baseball. And yes, the roof is off at Marlins Park. It's a gorgeous Friday night for baseball. As the Braves come to town tonight, it's game one of a three-game series with their division rivals from the Sunshine State. Hi again, friends. Joe Simpson, Chip Carey. Welcome to the ballpark. We're going to call this finally the Something's Got to Give series. The Braves have lost six consecutive games. The Marlins have lost 13 of their last 15. And into that fray goes Mike Fulton, who, bowl, by the way, is winless so far this year with not a lot of run support, but he's taking on a Marlins ball club that is battered and bruised for game one tonight. You're hot. <laughs> I'm hot. Let's get this team hot. Yes, what do you okay. say? Right, I Let's like get it. on a roll right now behind Mike Fulton, who might be the best 0-4 pitcher in the National League. Yes, he's coming off a rough start against the St. Louis Cardinals, but everybody has a rough start once in a while. He's been really good. 2.2 run support per start. That's not enough. Hopefully he'll get some more tonight. But Mike's been doing a much better job of pitching, not just maxing out on every effort and trying to throw hard. Road games, road starts this year, outstanding. 2.16 ERA, and don't forget that loss he suffered in Milwaukee after a boot at shortstop that led to a three-run homer. He was cruising right up to that point. He'll match up with a man that can throw some heat, too. Jose Ureña is the man that gets the ball for the Marlins, coming off a six-inning, one-hit performance last time out against the New York Mets. When we come back, that's a sight we hope not to see this entire weekend. Adventures in the outfield, and Kelsey will have more from Marlins Park with that right after this.
is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. And by Delta Airlines. Welcome back into beautiful Miami for game one of a three game set versus the Marlins. Now the Braves are very familiar with the Marlins. This is a ballpark that we come to often, but something we're not too familiar with is the home run structure in left center field. So I decided earlier today to take an inside look at it. So they taught me how to make it go off three different steps. Twist the key, turn the knob, press the button and you're off. The 75 foot tall structure goes into action for a little over 30 seconds and it sends up 30 gallons of water every time. So in a ballpark that was built to reflect the city, this was the finishing touch. Marlins owner Jeffrey Loria is also an art dealer, so he had a big influence over the art all over the stadium. And you hear many different opinions about this, but it's unique to Marlins Park and that's exactly what they were going for. It's different, you know, I think. You know, in this, um, you know, this league, you got everybody's kind of got their own thing. You know, in different ballparks, uh, you know, Miami's got the Marlin. You know, there's beach. Um, you know, it looks like, you know, it could be an affair or something. But, um, you know, I think it's cool. It's a good atmosphere kind of thing for the fans. You know, it's it's a different, obviously, but um, you know, everybody, like I said, you know, each ballpark has kind of their own niche, and you know, this is it. So, it's cool. Well, the Braves will hope the home run structure stays quiet tonight as Mike fulton takes the mound for the Braves and tries to get a streak going. First pitch and starting lineups are next with Chip and Joe. Baseball is brought to you by your local Ford dealer and the Georgia Lottery. Miami's a great place to enjoy an off day. That's exactly what the Atlanta Club did yesterday. But tonight starts a stretch of 20 games in 20 days. First on the docket is the Miami Marlins, a Marlins club that is racked by injury, and as a result, their starting lineup looks a lot different than what we saw earlier this year. Martin Prado's out with a hamstring. Derek Dietrich plays third base. D. Gordon has to play shortstop because of Danny Echeverria has an oblique issue. Steve Lombardozzi made the team in, well, was asked to join the team by Miami when they signed him in February. He went all across the state trying to find a job, and the Marlins had him stashed away in the minor leagues. So he's at second base. Justin Bohr is their first baseman. J.T. Real Muto's behind the plate. But the standards are in the outfield that Marlins trio of Ozuna, Yelich, and Stanton can really swing the bats for Don Mattingly's club, which has lost six of their last seven. They're 13 and 20 on the year, Joe, and having all kinds of injury 
and pitching problems. Yeah, and um, I'm not sure which one's worse right now, trying to get their pitching staff in order or dealing with these injuries, but they are having a real hard time putting uh, players on the field and keeping them there for any matter of time. So when you've got to move D. Gordon, an all-star, over to another position just to try and fill a hole, that's tough duty for a manager, and they're just trying to hang on until they get some of their players back. And who knows? I mean, looking at the injuries that we saw today on video of Martin Prado and Echeverria, it may be a while. Brian Snitker hasn't really had to deal with injury problems. He's had to deal with ineffective starting pitching problems. Brian, as you see in his second year as the Braves manager, Atlanta comes into tonight's action, 11 and 20. They've lost their last six games. And as we've seen so many times, Joe, the big problem has been early deficits that have been too big for a Braves offense. It's done a pretty good job to overcome. Yeah, and the Marlins are good at scoring first. 58% of the time they score before their opponent. So we'll see how that works out against Atlanta today but it's a beautiful night the roof is open and for the first time since 2013 this marks the fourth straight day they have played with the roof open so that's quite a quite an accomplishment given the weather and how quickly it can change here yeah not much heat almost no humidity which is a delight for all the players all the fans too and for Jose Urania and Mike Fulton Evich who will oppose each other on the mound Urania coming off Arguably one of his best outings in the major leagues is filling a huge glaring hole for the Marlins. That's in their starting rotation. Well, he's 25 years old, 6'3, 205 out of the Dominican Republic. And when they put him in the rotation, again, out of need, look what he did against the Mets last Sunday. Six innings, a one hit shutout ball. He only threw 63 pitches because he only walked one guy. His numbers against the Braves, pretty ugly. A 15 plus ERA in efforts was one to start and the rest of it is out of the bullpen. This guy throws hard. He's in the mid to upper 90s and left handers aren't hitting anything off of him because he has a great change up. It's like an 89 or 90 mile an hour change up that he works down and away to lefties. 89 mile an hour change up. There you go. Go get him boys. And this is the lineup the Braves will present in game one as always the starting nines presented by your local Toyota dealer. Ender Inciarte, Brandon Phillips, and Freddie Freeman, first, second, and third. Matt Kemp really enjoys hitting here in Miami. He's the cleanup man. Nick Marcagas, Adonis Garcia, Tyler Flowers, Dansby Swanson, eighth, and Mike Fultonevich is the pitcher batting ninth. Be nice to get off to a good start tonight and get off, get off that six game losing streak. Give Fultonevich a few runs to work with. Matt Kemp's always hit well in this ballpark, and remember, in that brief two game series back in April he was hurt and did not play at all Braves split those two games. So hopefully Matt will be a difference maker for the Braves this weekend throw down to second base and we're just a few moments away from tonight's first pitch. And in Ciarte makes his way to the left hand batters box he'll get things started for Atlanta. And at 256 for the year, he's hit five homers. He's knocked in 15. His on base percentage is the leadoff man at 308. Starting a little late in Miami. Mourinho ready to go, and his first is Powder River, a called strike. 82 degrees at first pitch at 714 Eastern Time. That bounced up there. Ball one strike one. Toby Basner is the home plate umpire for game one. Dan Bellino, Marvin Hudson, and Jerry Lane along the baselines. One ball, one strike. Off the plate, two and one. Played many games here with the roof open that I can remember. No, we haven't. So I'll be real interested to see how ball travels, if it travels at all. With the roof panels open, and that's well off the plate. We were told before the game that the last three games the wind has blown in through those openings in left field and held balls up. Sometimes the wind from another direction will kind of circulate in here and blow out through those open panels. But not lately. 
double count for Ender. Brandon Phillips waits next. And that's popped out of play into the second deck. The ring has got a unique arm action in that there isn't much. It's uh, kind of a chicken wing delivery. But he can throw hard. Another one headed for the seats to the left side. Do it again. Watch how from his elbow to his shoulder there, his arm is very upright and it stays that way through his delivery. Well hit toward left center. Yelich and Ozuna converge. It'll be Ozuna at the warning track. That ball carried well. It was hit hard. But Ender's retired on eight pitches for out number one. Brandon Phillips at 294, a couple of homers, 10 RBIs. Brandon's looking for his first base hit on the road trip. And that shaved a corner, strike one. Stop, it's an even count. Well, it's no secret the Braves are looking for success anywhere, any way they can get it. Perhaps this park is the place for that to happen. Yeah, they split those two games I mentioned, but uh, they've had pretty good luck here against the fish. Braves lost the first game head to head, eight to four. They won the second game on April 12th by a 5 4 count. Marlins will make their first trip to Atlanta June 16th, 17th, and 18th. Pitch is up and in. Again, he's gone three and one this time to Brandon Phillips. Sharply hit to second and smothered by Lombardozzi. He makes the recovery and the throw. There's out number two. So you're looking for a positive. Here's one for Braves fans. Head to head since 2015. Braves have won 13 out of 19 games here. Almost five runs a game. Great numbers with runners in scoring position and a much better ERA than the Fish. And the Braves, over that stretch from the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning on, they've outscored the Marlins 31 to 13. So they've had their way late in the game, too. That stat's not surprising because generally speaking, fish don't have arms. So you're almost guaranteed to have a better ERA. I see. I saw what you did there. Thank you. <laughs> Freddie Freeman <laughs> takes low, two balls, no <laughs> strikes. <laughs> Freddie at 336, 12 homers, 20 RBIs, bit of a dry spell in May, six hits so far this month. Shift on for him as he launches one to the left side out of play. Kind of a Odd start to this game for Urania in that he throws 67% first pitch strikes. That's a very high number. Has not done that tonight. Back in the count to Freeman. Two balls, two strikes now. They will back off that shift and have two guys on the left side, but Dietrich way off the line in third. Radio ready. Here's his 2 2, and it struck him out of the inside corner. Freeman disagrees. But uh, Toby Basner has the final say, and Urania has a 1 2 3, top of the first.
first inning. Now it's Mike Fulton Evich's turn to take the hill. He seeks his first victory of the year tonight. He's also 25 years old, 6'4, 200 pounds. Here's something that we should keep an eye on tonight. A lot of times Mike really establishes that fastball and gets off to really good starts against the first against the lineup first time through and then adjustments start taking place and he struggles a little bit. We'll keep our eye on that tonight. His four keys to pitching success tonight three four and five. That's Yelich Ozuna Stanton. Those three outfielders have driven in 72 runs between them. You got to try and avoid having those guys on base and Gordon in the third. Well that would be great. He's a 345 career 335 career hitter against the Braves if he doesn't hit till the third inning that would be awesome. And it's really interesting the way Don Mattingly has structured his lineup for the game tonight. It's not D Gordon leading off but Derek Dietrich who takes a strike. Dietrich at 239 for the year. No homers eight runs battered in. He's the Marlins third baseman now with Martin Prado hurt. And he jumps on that pitch and pops it a mile high toward left. And Matt Kemp says he's got it, and he does. Four out number one. Here's the rest of the Marlins starting night, again presented by Toyota. JT Real Muto's a terrific catcher. He's batting second. Yellow Chozuna Stanton, as Joe said. Bohr Lombardozzi, the pitcher, Urania hitting eighth. And D. Gordon is hitting ninth for Miami. It's not like Gordon's hitting 190. He's hitting 271, but he's not getting on base that much otherwise. He only walks seven times in 32 games. So uh, you get the point of him batting ninth in front of uh, Real Muto and Yelich the second time around, but it's nice for the Braves not to have to face him right away. Real Muto hitting 310 on the year, a couple of homers, but like a couple of his Marlins mates, he's really struggled at the plate in his home park, surprisingly. Real Muto's hitting just 163 here in Miami and only one run batted in. One ball, one strike for the Miami catcher. Good slider. One and two. yesterday about young players when they come to the big leagues who have been successful and think that they can come to the major leagues and just raw talent alone is enough and he certainly has all of that. Line to third Garcia's Johnny on the spot makes the play two out. But that even as hard as he can throw he can't live by that alone and he's got to learn to pitch and he said and I feel like I'm learning that and I'm getting there and I would imagine that learning curve at this level is exceptionally difficult and not just pitchers position players too it's hard to think that you can't just show up and be as good at this level as you have been at every other level but Mike's working at being a pitcher and using that fastball when he needs it to be effective with it. Christian Yelich jumps on the first one, lines it off Phillips glove. He dropped it, got it back, and Yelich beat it at first. That'll be an infield hit off the glove of Brandon Phillips. The ball dropped under his body, and by the time he recovered, Yelich was streaking to the bag and beat the wrap with two outs. Hard hit. And probably the worst thing that happened was that it fell right under him under his body he had to get off of it to grab it and throw it. So no challenge by the Braves Yelich aboard. And that brings up Marcelo Zuna who has worn out Atlanta pitching. Uh, he's one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. His last 12 games five homers eight RBIs. And unlike Real Muto he loves hitting in this park. Just took a bell tie strike. He's drawing some walks too. We noticed it when we were here that he's not chasing that slider away like he used to. 
Late on that fastball and down two strikes. Well, I love your Ford key. If there are three guys you don't want to beat you, it's Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. And they're all swinging well right now. Nothing in two. Yelich with a good lead at first. And that's off the plate. Well, Zuna had a two homer game against the Cardinals on Monday. 11 homers for the year. Seven of the 11 have come in this gigantic ballpark. Time to play a foul. Good off speed pitch there. He had another two home run game against the Braves. One off Cologne, and this one, how he hit it, I have no idea. Back on April 11th, above the Braves bullpen. I have no idea how he got his, the barrel of his bat to that pitch. That was Mike's lone relief appearance of the season for the Braves. Despite giving up a couple of runs, it was very impressive. He had a dynamite changeup. That game pitch popped up, foul ground. Freeman on the run takes a peek, has room, and puts it away, and that retires the side. Yelich an infield hit is left stranded. We head to the second, no score. Is the man that will start the second inning. That's Braves left fielder Matt Kemp. He's riding a very impressive two week streak. You got to like it when you've got 11 RBIs in that 11 game streak. His average right at 333 overall. So that's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. And as Joe mentioned, Matt didn't play in the two games here in Miami. Let's see. He can be a big difference maker here in game one of the series. Six overs, 18 RBIs for Matt. And Arena gets a foul ball to the right side, strike one. There has been very little wrong with the Braves offense. They're scoring runs. They're racking up hits. Matt was very upset with himself and very self-critical after the Braves lost down in Houston. He said we just haven't come up with a big hit. And that has been a rarity over the last two weeks. Yeah, that eats at a guy like Matt Kemp to come up with the bases loaded, two out, and a chance to do some damage and get his team back either even or put him back on top and to strike out or chase a bad pitch like he did that that doesn't sit well with him and he's had to sleep on that for a couple of nights. Matt got that call. Half count two and two. And that was a better pitch than strike three to Freeman.
right back where it came from and Lombardozzi can't get it. Matt Kemp has the first hit of the night for Atlanta. Urania goes to the stretch here in the second inning. 12 in a row for Matt Kemp. Pitcher falling off to the first base side cost himself a chance to feel that one. And remember Urania against the Mets only gave up one hit in six innings. His last time out. Man aboard for Nick Markakis, batting 280 for the year, a homer 13 knocked in. And that's outside ball one. It's funny how different this park seems and feels with the roof open. Line into right field. That was well hit. Stanton comes up cleanly. Back to back hits for Atlanta. Two aboard and nobody out. Boy, this was a nice swing. Fastball. You know these Braves hitters too are very aware of the changeup that he does a good job, Urania, of keeping down and away to lefties. Nick was all over that. So a great chance for Adonis Garcia batting 234. Adonis was one for eight with an RBI in the first series with the fish. Over the screen foul, strike one. During the six game losing streak, 59 innings have been played, not counting tonight's action. The Braves have led for one of those 59 innings. They have a great chance here in the second. Strike two. Man, another high strike call. Track shows it was at the top of the zone or nicked it. One ball, two strikes for Adonis Garcia. Had a fourth inning home run in Houston. In the Braves' last game. Let's see what he does here behind him the count. Look at that one off the plate, two and two. Hard for him to throw that change. Up. See, that was 89 miles an hour. Hard for him to throw that and be effective with it to right handers because it's not breaking away from them. You saw a slider a couple of pitches ago. It was 84 and the change up at 89. Hard hit ball to third. Dietrich to second one. Lombardozzi turns it and Kent's at third with two outs. Adonis a rocket to third base, but he's doubled up. There's also something that hampered the Braves in Houston. They hit into three double plays in the first four innings of game two of that series. And Garcia far and away the team leader. That's his eighth double play ball. So a tough break for him. Here's Flowers, runner at third, two out. Tyler at 361, nine RBIs. And he unloads deep toward left field. Will the ballpark hold it? It bounces off the top of the fence. And Tyler Flowers has put the Braves in front. A first pitch line drive homer to the left of the home run sculpture. And the first homer of the year for the Braves catcher makes it 2 0. Tyler had a big hit the last time we were here. He got a ninth inning single to drive in a run that won a ball game. Fastball right down the pipe, and he was ready. Right off the top of the fence. Perfect. Turning around some 96 gas. So there's a lead. Atlanta up 2 0. 
And Dansby Swanson, the batter. Dansby's got a hit in each of the last three Braves games. He's been on base in 12 of 13. Ten hits, ten walks in that stretch. Sorry for it. A lot of high strikes early. Densby cues that one away. Two and two. Back to back singles, a double play, and then a first pitch homer from Tyler Flowers over the fence in left center. Two nothing Braves in the second inning. Swing and a miss, and that'll retire the side. Tyler Flowers' first home run of the season comes in the second inning tonight. Now Mike Fultonevich will try to shut down Giancarlo Stanton. is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer let's go places and SunTrust uh, as a late great Ernie Johnson would have said all roads lead to Marlins Park in Miami tonight MLB.com at bat your number one mobile app for live Atlanta Braves baseball stay connected with a fully customizable experience Get Braves home screen icons and app features as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, StatCast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Giancarlo Stanton, Justin Bohr, and Lombardozzi are coming up for the fish. And a strike to Stanton. have had good luck against Stanton the last two or three years but not on the last trip here. A couple of homers. For Giancarlo in the first two games. He's hit 15 homers against the Braves in a career total of 319 at bats. But he's also struck out 108 times in that stretch against Atlanta pitching. And he's behind in the count here. Two good breaking balls. Chop foul pass to our old pal Freddy Gonzalez, the Marlins' third base coach, who's doing his Renee Latchman impersonation with Stanton in the batter's box. Can't get 
far enough away. <laughs> Latch used to stand exactly where Freddie is when Mark McGuire was up in a Cardinal uniform. The pitch is rifled toward right. Marcakis dives, can't corral it. Ball drops in front, and it's a long single for Stanton. That's got to be encouraging for Miami, the way he approached that at bat. Well, the scouting report shows that he's been hitting the ball more to right center, especially behind in the count. And here's another good case of it. Nick's been making so many terrific diving catches, you expect him to get every one of them. So here's Justin Bohr, the Miami first baseman. Five homers, 21 RBIs this year. He's hit eight lifetime homers against the Braves. Six of them have come here. And you might recall his season last year was interrupted when he stepped on first base awkwardly at Turner Field and missed a couple of months. That really hurt the Marlins. They were in the playoff picture for much of the second half of the season last year. And he swung late there and is behind 0-2. Side on an 0 2 count. So the Marlins have back to back hits to start their second inning. See, here's what I was kind of talking about when I was referring to young players who come up and think they can do things by talent alone. This is a good pitch. This is a change up down. And this grown man covers it and yanks it through the hole. He's not supposed to do that. But that's what these guys do at this level. So Mike in some trouble now with a 2 nothing lead. Steve Lombardozzi is the Marlins hitter. Yeah, they've lost four infielders this week due to injury. And Lombardozzi, an interesting story. First the pitch, which is a strike. Lombardozzi didn't have a job. And was driving all over the state of Florida, almost auditioning and asking for an opportunity from just about every team in the state to see if they had a need for a, a bench guy, utility guy. And the Marlins said yes, they did. And it's a good thing they did sign this guy on February 28th. Because they've lost Prado, they've lost you know, Rojas, they lost JT Riddle, whose injury isn't serious, but has cost him a couple of days, and a Danny Echeverria. Yeah, they even signed Micah Vilas, the veteran middle infielder. Swing and a miss. Three pitches takes care of Lombardozzi. There's the first strikeout for Fulton Evich. And here's the situation where having the pitcher hit eighth really helps the Braves. They don't figure Arena to be able to catch up to anything Mike throws him, but we'll see about that. He's 0 for 6 with three strikeouts. Up and away, one ball, no strikes. He's got one sacrifice, and this is where if Mike wants to air it out, air it out. You want to throw it as hard as you want, you can right here. He's still bunning. Hard for him to soften it. Like that. One ball, one strike. Especially if he's running as he's trying to bunt it. There's the butt. It backspins toward Flowers, who's got to play at third. Thank you very much. Force out of Stanton. 
two away. Urania is going to have to run the bases, and now D. Gordon's the hitter with runners at first and second and two outs. Home run by Flowers, and now a good defensive play. And you're right, that ball had some bite on it right out there in the dirt. It came right back to Tyler. Nice play. Like the Island Green at 17 at the TPC. Mm -hmm. So here is D. Gordon hitting ninth. This guy is a Braves killer. He's hit in 15 of 16 games against Atlanta pitching to the tune of a 347 average. And he takes a strike. That would have been nice to get to the third inning without him hitting, but here he is. At that it's nothing in two. They have some guys with some real ugly averages hitting with runners in scoring position, and D. Gordon is one of them. He says three for 18. But he's worn out the Braves. Hopefully, Fulton Evich can cool him off here with two on, two out, and two strikes. And he just missed. Doesn't run all that well. He's at second. Pitcher Urania at first. And it's broken back, grounded out to second. Phillips will flip to Dansby, and Mike is out of the second inning. He gave up back to back singles, struck out Lombardozzi, and got two ground outs to preserve a two run lead. Yeah, the Twins, one of the great stories so far in 2017. They've won 17 games. And Irvin Santana is one of the big reasons why. He's having a terrific start for Minnesota. Yeah, depending on what happens with the Twins the rest of the way, and I'd love to see them in contention for the whole year, but if they fall out of it somehow, I would guess that Santana will be a, uh, a real prize come trading deadline for the Twins. If he can continue to pitch well. And Jerome mentioned Miguel Sano. We saw him in interleague play last year and kind of an unimpressive series. An enormous man, a lot of power. Yeah. He's on pace for 47 homers, 152 RBIs, 125 runs, and 131 walks. I think the Twins would take that. Yep. That'll be a fun story to follow the rest of the summer. Mike Fultonevich for Atlanta starts the third, and CRT and Phillips to follow, and Arena. Drops in a strike. 
Good work by Fulton Evich in the second back to back hits. But he took care of the seven eight nine hitters and preserved the lead. Run support has been an issue for Mike. The Braves have given him just 10 runs of support all year. And that covers five starts. So for him, 2 nothing might feel like 10 nothing. <laughs> that swing looked like his wind up when he's pitching. <laughs> he was starting early and it wasn't fair that he threw him a slider. And he did it again. <laughs> and Fulton Evich, a whirling dervish, is struck out. And there's the first down of the inning. Get him next time. Enters the batter, an eight pitch at bat, and he flat out to left in the opening inning. Up and away, one ball, no strikes. Field a base hit for Ender on a 2 0 pitch. And that's the fourth Atlanta hit. Flowers jumped on a first pitch fastball for the home run. And I'm beginning to think that these hitters for the Braves realize that Urania, if he falls behind in the count, really has to go to the fastball to try to get back in it. Does that fastball look straight to you? It did. He's up to 43 pitches. The last thing the Marlins want is to have to get into that beleaguered bullpen early. They've had their problems in relief, too. Here's Phillips. A ground out for Brandon his first time up. He's 0 for 1. And 0 for 9 on the trip at the plate. There and fouled straight back. Let's see if Ender tries to run. Ah, he broke too early. And now Bohr is going to try to run him down. D. Gordon's got it. And he tags him right before the first base bag. So Enciarte is picked off. Two outs. Tried to get a little early jump because he knew he needed to. Rio Muto has thrown out 33% of base stealers this year. That's a great number. Eight for 24. So Brandon bats with a 1 1 count and the base is empty. 2 0 Atlanta. Tyler Flowers, a second inning home run with two outs. And that's fouled away, 1 and 2. Has not been throwing strike one nearly as much as he has coming into play tonight. No. That's forced his pitch count up. Urania hasn't walked anybody, but he's had a lot of 3 1, 3 2 counts. Another one here to Phillips. The pitch is 
bounced into the Miami dugout. This is one of those times where having Freddie Freeman hit behind you is a real bonus in that you're going to get a good pitch to hit. They don't want to walk you and have to face him with two out. But he just walked Phillips and it will be Freddie Freeman. So it's time for AARP's getting to know Freddie Freeman. Let's do that, shall we? 27 opposite field home runs since the start of the 2015 season. That's the second most in baseball by a left handed hitter. Chris Davis of the Orioles is the only guy with more. And he's hit 32 of them. There's been one homer to left center. That was by Tyler Flowers. He's a right hand hitter. Let's see if Freddie can poke one that way. It's 386. And he took a shot to left, fouled it away. Even count. Freddie in the top 10 in almost every offensive category in the National League. Ninth in average, fifth in runs, third in homers. But only 27th in RBIs because, unfortunately for Freddie, of his 12 homers, nine of them have been solo shots. Right. Had a nice swing at that changeup, though. It was just a little too far to reach it. The one, two. Low and away. Two balls, two strikes. He's got excellent action on that pitch, but not so much on his fastball. Boy, nice job of covering that borderline pitch. He got called out his first time up on a pitch that was not a strike. Borderline at best, and he wasn't going to give Toby Bazner another opportunity. You can see where they're trying to pitch him. Let's see if they come in here. They did and almost hit him. Full count. So Phillips will be off to the races. Another deep count for Urania. Only 31 strikes in his first 56 pitches. There goes Phillips. And the pitch is low. Back to back walks with two outs. Matt Kemp's the hitter. Braves are waiting this guy out now. Kemp with a base hit his first time up, and that extended his hitting streak, as Joe said, to 12 consecutive games. 19 games in a row for Matt is his major league high. Missing a lot up. He's getting, been getting a lot of high strikes called. And a belt high fastball to Flowers went out of the ballpark. One ball, no strikes. And time is called. It's no secret, Joe. We talked about it in April when we saw the Marlins for the first time. The big question mark for this team was not their offense. It didn't figure to be the bullpen, but how good was their starting pitching going to be? To say it's been disappointing, I think, is an understatement for them. Wei Yin Chen has been hurt. He's on the disabled list with arm fatigue. Remember, he's pitching with a partially torn ligament in his elbow. Volquez hasn't been very effective. Adam Conley, a guy we liked a lot, has already yeah. been sent back to AAA. That is really amazing. Rojas tried to play with what they thought was just a, a sore thumb. Turned out it was broken. Played three days with it because they were shorthanded. So two and zero oh, guys have been sitting on the fastball. 
popped up. Left side of the diamond, D. Gordon and Dietrich. It's Dietrich in foul ground. He'll make the play, and that'll retire the side. Urania survives two two out walks in the third. Top of the order up for Miami. In Miami, 2 0 as we head to the bottom of the third inning. That means it's time for our cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Good numbers for the Braves, as we've said here in this ballpark against the National League East over the last two plus years, a 13 and 6 record here. Not so much at Washington. No. <laughs> that one's the one we really got to work on. Yeah. So two good innings so far for Fulton Evich. Now he goes through the Marlins lineup for a second time. And as you said, this is where things have gotten dicey for Mike in the past. Yeah, it's worth showing the folks again. That's what we talked about when he took the mound tonight. First time through the order, an outstanding average against him. Second time through the order, it goes up quite a bit. Dietrich, Real Muto, and Yelich, the first three for Miami. And the 2-0 pitch. Right there. Beauty. 333, the second time through the order. Same with the third. And that hit Dietrich. Not surprisingly, Dietrich is the all time Miami Marlins hit by pitch leader. That's the 61st time he's been plunked in his big league career. And a man aboard with nobody out. Well, I was just about to say you know, one of the things that will help that second time through the order is to keep those leadoff guys off base, but here he's got one, and his situational averages change a lot too. Getting out of that issue in the second inning, a good sign for him, but uh, his average very high against him out of the stretch. Real Muto lined out to third his first time up. And it's just so striking. You see a player as good as Real Muto hitting over 300, and then you look at his home batting average in the 160s. How does that happen? I'm sure the Marlins wish they had an answer for it. They'll tie in a strike, even count. I think some of that is just coincidence. There might be some cases where you don't feel comfortable hitting in your own ballpark, or you don't like the batter's eye, or you don't pick the ball up as well. I'm not sure what it is for JT. Line drive center. Ender's going to catch that. And there's the first out. So we 
Real Muto's hit it hard twice. Nothing to show for it. And some of that bad luck you were talking about. And here's Yelich. Christian Yelich, one of the game's best young players. Played on the WBC winning American squad this spring. Said it was maybe the best experience he's ever had in his baseball career. He's one of the guys, and it, this isn't one of the situations. It's not a runner in scoring position situation, but he's one of the guys that has a bad average in that spot. And the reason I bring it up now is as a comparison to the Braves' number three hitter. I think we had a number for Freddie the other day that even if you added in the walks, he had 18 plate appearances for the runner in scoring position, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yelich is six for 35. No balls and a strike. Well, he's a better hitter than that, but certainly hasn't shown it this year yet. Career highs in homers and RBIs slugging percentage last year. And just 25 years old. Well, it's first got to the big leagues in 2013. Last year he played 155 games. Oh and one. Good pitch. 0 oh and two. I don't think he was expecting a change up. Do you? Uh, no. That was great. What a spot for it too. Great location. Was the pitch that was so good for Mike here in relief in his lone relief outing, and he made it move his feet with that one. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, I remember saying that that outing might have been a great opportunity for him to work on that, get some confidence in it. Two innings, three hits, two runs, four strikeouts in the 8 4 Marlins victory. That was on April the 11th. Pitch. Up the middle. Dansby dives. Can't get it. So Dietrich stops at second. Yelich is two for two. And here we are with the three, four, five guys for Miami in a two run game. Boy, he tomahawked that. He got on top of it. Banged it back through the middle. The last five games for their outfield. Three homers, five ribbies for Ozuna. 450 on base for Yelich and Stanton has come out of it too. Not just home runs, but a high batting average. 72 RBIs out of the Miami outfield. And the Miami outfield, it's third, fourth, and fifth on their lineup card. One of Joe's four keys tonight. Here's Ozuna. He popped out in foul ground and the first. And he took a strike. I recall last year Barry Bonds was the hitting coach for Miami of all of their hitters it seems Ozuna has benefited the most from his experience with Bonds. He's turned into a ferocious home run hitter. Strike two. Eleven homers and twenty nine RBIs tied for sixth in all of baseball. That was a weird follow through from Mike. I don't know if he slipped a little bit or not. Tumbled off the mound and lost his glove on that pitch. And that was a slider. Whoops. Good thing he didn't hit it back at him.
Very strong guy. Ozuna. If they try to stay out there where you see those fox tracks pitches. He chased one up and in and went down swinging. That was a pitch similar to the one he hit out of the ballpark. Not that much different. And I don't know how he hit that one last time we were here and you would have expected him to do this and that swing right through it. <laughs> I'm not sure Mike that's where Mike wanted to throw it but it worked. It was so bad it was good for the second out and the second strikeout but he's not out of the woods yet. Giancarlo Stanton's hitting fifth tonight. Two on two out two run Atlanta game. Stayed high. And Flowers out for a visit. When I was having that chat with Mike yesterday about the progress he's making and the steps he's taking to, to be a pitcher, he was talking about the influence of his teammates. And he said, We have a lot of confident guys. And he was talking about Matt Kemp, Brandon Phillips, Freddie Freeman. And he mentioned a couple of his pitching pitching colleagues too, like Jim Johnson. He said even on a bad night, after a bad night, they have great confidence that they're going to bounce back. And he said that's something that hopefully he will pick up and learn from as well. And not just from a bad night, but from a bad inning. Mike made some big pitches in the second. He made a big one to get Ozuna for the second out. He's got to face the biggest Marlins hitter. That's Giancarlo Stanton. We mentioned that the scouting report on Stanton was that he was hitting more balls to right center. It's odd to see Ender playing him a little toward right center. Up. Generally speaking, against Stanton so far tonight, the one two pitch. He struck him out with a slider. And that's the end of the inning. A hit batsman and a single put Marlins at first and second with one out. But back to back strikeouts of Ozuna and Stanton helps Mike Fulton Evich protect a two run lead after three. the fourth inning and next time you come to Marlins Park 
be aware. Keep your sense open because they pump sense into the stadium. So when the gates open, they pump caramel popcorn into the general concourse area, into their luxury diamond club. They pump a black orchid scent, and in their team store, they pump an orange scent. So Chip and Joe, I did request for them to pump chocolate chip cookies into y'all's booth. So you're welcome. The scent or the real thing? Perfect. <laughs> we'll, we'll take either. Well, I'll, I'll send both. That sounds great. <laughs> One of the things that fans were hoping here would be that pump common sense into the concourse. <laughs> that was perfect. As Dick Markakis goes to work. 2 nothing Atlanta and he takes a strike. Fifty one pitches for Mike Fulton Evich. Sixty two pitches now for Arena. Once into the second deck out of play. And I'm with you. The roof open. This is a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. The roof panels out and left open. You get a view of downtown Miami. And that's out of play foul. I, Kelsey was telling us earlier that the reason for the orange scent is because this ballpark was built on the site of the old Orange Bowl. Hurricanes and the Dolphins used to play. Line drive into left center field. That'll get down. Another nice piece of hitting for Nick Markakis. He's got another multi hit game, and the Braves put the leadoff man on for the second time in four innings. Looked like a tough pitch, too. I think it was the changeup, and again, Nick is all over it. Yep. Look at that. That was only a few inches off the ground, and he laced it. Sixth multi hit game for Marcakis this year. And that brings up Adonis Garcia. I don't know if it's just me or not, but you see a little more spring in the step of the Atlanta hitters with a 2 0 lead instead of a two or three run deficit early tonight. Always, always helps when you've already got a couple in the bank. A little looser when you go to the plate. That's chopped toward Dietrich at third. He's got a tough play. One play to first, and Bohr scooped it out. Nice play by Dietrich, the former Georgia Tech star. And let's see if the Braves challenge this call at first. Brian Snickers indicating he might want to take a peek. I'm hoping Adonis Garcia is okay. He's walking gingerly back to the dugout. Nice play by Dietrich. Clearly out. We noticed in Houston that Adonis had trouble slowing down and stopping when he was running down the line. And he is gingerly making his way to the bench. Anytime you're going down those steps one at a time, that tells you something. So Tyler Flowers with a first pitch homer in the second. Took ball one here in the fourth. Fly ball to left. Will the ballpark hold this one? It's right at the pole. It is off the pole. Oh, he caught it. Oh, it is caught. I beg your pardon. I lost him in the corner. I saw Jerry Lane stick yeah. his hand up and thought he said home run, but yeah. Ozuna caught it in the blind spot in the left field corner. Well, to his credit, he stayed with it. Wow. Tough break for Tyler. So Dansby Swanson's going to be intentionally walked. And they will go after Mike Fultonevich with two outs in the fourth. Mike struck out his lone time up. That was in the third. Okay. 
New set of signs for Urania from JT Real Muto. One ball, one strike. Two runs, five hits for the Braves, no runs, four hits for the Marlins. We have had exactly one, one, two, three innings so far in this game. Mike might look for a slider here. He put it in play left side. D. Gordon charges, throws off stride, and Bohr held the bag. And that will retire the side. Good hustle. No runs, one hit, two left. Home fourth coming up. My name is Sloan Postal White. I'm in fifth grade and I'm 11 years old. My question is for Mike following new kids and my question is how do you feel when some when the when like the people pronounce your last name wrong how do you pronounce it? The actual uh, pronunciation of my last name is Fultonevich and um, uh, I basically assume they're not going to get it right the first time anyway so uh, you know I've heard uh, plenty of last name mess ups over my life, but um, it's it's really hard for me to uh, say what they say. But Fultonevich is how you say my last name. Isn't she a sweetheart? Yeah. And if I could talk to her right now, I'd, I'd tell her that's why we call him Fulty. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> but I like Foley Nukas. That's pretty good. Me too. And Me speaking too. of pretty good, his line's pretty good tonight. Mike's got three shutout innings, three strikeouts. Mixing his pitch as well. He's not just rare at back and throwing fastballs at these guys. And he'll have the six, seven, and eight hitters coming up with a two run lead. While he's in the ball game, first six games he started, five runs total. Tonight he's got two from the home run by Tyler Flowers, and they've only had the lead while he's been in the game in six of 32 plus. So a chance for him to show what he can do with a lead. The ball got loose in center field. Ender and Ciarte went and picked that up. So a momentary delay as Justin Bohr stands in for the fish. He singled on an 0-2 count back in the Miami second. Ball one to Justin Bohr, a former Cubs farmhand, blocked by Anthony Rizzo. That's how he made his way to Miami. Right down the third base line and almost an extra base hit. Two and one. It's funny. He's such a dead pull hitter and was able to go out and get a pitch away from him his last time up, a good changeup. 
tried to actually hit that one down the third baseline. High fly ball hammer deep right field. You can forget about that one. A solo home run for four makes it a 2 1 game. Ball coming right into him. Might have been a slider that just didn't break. Two and one count. They didn't want to give up, give in on a fastball there. Tried the slider, but hung it out over the plate. So Boar's sixth home run makes it a 2 1 game. Here's Lombardozzi. He takes ball one. Seven of his nine homers against Atlanta have been hit here. Ball two. It's been a while since Lombardozzi's picked up a hit in the major leagues. Little flare into center. Ender's going to catch that. In fact, for Lombardozzi, April 22nd, 2014 was his last major league hit. Well, then give him a high five for perseverance and yep, doing what you said he did, trying to drive around all the camps in spring training looking for a job got one and then as fate would have it he's in the big leagues because of so many injuries for these guys. He's over two here's Urania, the other pitcher a strike. Who knows how long Lombardozzi will be here but it justifies all the hard work he's put in knowing he could still play at this level or if he was given a chance keep working at it keep plugging good for him oh that back Sereno off the plate one ball one strike another hanging breaking ball had to throw it too hard Hit for Arena. His first hit of the year. Thought he'd come back, maybe make him flinch again, but hung another one. So now Mike's in the soup. D. Gordon and Derek Dietrich lurking. One in, one on, one out. We have the Miami fourth. Gordon bounced out to Brandon Phillips his first time up. Bouncing ball to Freeman. Got to hurry. There's one. Quick release and a double play. Freeman to Swanson. Back to Freeman. And the Marlins settle for the solo homer from Justin Bohr. Top of the order up for the Braves in the fifth. And Durinciarte will get it started. It's a 2 1 game.
Have a lead 2 1 top of the order right guys at the right time to support Fulton Evich as we've completed four innings tonight in open roofed Marlins Park. Flags aren't moving much. No indication of any real breeze going in or out of those windows out there. We were told before the game that if the weather tomorrow is like today that they will have the roof open again tomorrow. That really is a treat for the folks who like open air baseball in this part of the world. That's the luxury of having a retractable roof and why in this part of the country. I mean I know they have the pop up pop up storms but a lot of it's just for the heat and humidity to entice the fans to come knowing they can close the roof. But as we have seen in years past and series past just because you have a roof doesn't mean you won't have some issues with the weather. No balls at a strike. Even on opening day. That was as we said the last time we were here one of the. Great shots is the utter. Perplexed look. From the Marlins brass when. The roof was open and it was pouring rain. And I think Jeffrey Loria looked at David Sampson and said, We do have a roof, don't we? <laughs> Little pop into right field. Stanton's going to catch that. And that's the first down of the inning. Of course, one of the ongoing stories for the Marlins the last couple of weeks is that Jeffrey Loria apparently is entertaining offers to buy the team. A reported $1.3 billion price tag is what might get a potential ownership group the Marlins Club. Brandon Phillips the batter with one man out. And he throws a lot of high strikes doesn't he. Made a mistake to Flowers, and that's cost him the lead to this point. And that one skips up there, one ball, one strike. Marlins, of course, have had a great deal of success in previous years. World Championships in 97, World Championship in 2003. They got this new ballpark. They got Giancarlo Stanton locked up for a long, long time to a $300 million deal. They have the retractable roof. What they don't have. There's a lot of fans or a lot of W's. Two one pitch. Bounced foul and out of play. They suffered an incalculable loss last year with the passing of Jose Fernandez. Who would have immediately stabilized and legitimized the starting rotation and was a hugely popular figure in Miami. Foul again. Look out, folks. Oh, almost a great catch. Save everybody. Slowed it down anyway. Yeah, guy's wearing a Chipper Jones jersey. You know he's got a good glove. Phillips fouls it back to the screen. It's still two and two. But it'll be interesting to me to see what new ownership can do with this Marlins franchise. With all that Latin America has to offer our great sport with that community in this town. And the terrific young players they have. It's a shame they don't draw more. And frankly it's a shame they don't win more. Hard hit ball Dietrich diving play great play and a perfect throw. Big league play at third base by Derek Dietrich to Rob Brandon Phillips. Two outs. We're not used to seeing him play third. We're used to seeing him at second base, but he's made a couple of dandies over there tonight already. One coming in, and now a diving stop. Got a strong arm, too. Got a Georgia Tech. So two outs for Freeman. Freddie has struck out and walked. He swings the first pitch, drives it to center. Yelich got to the track, and one step on the warning track puts it away. 
And that retires the side. Miami has the top of its order coming up in the fifth. It's still 2-1. Park, April 6, 2015, a rain delay. Opening day two years ago, and there's a roof. They just didn't close it in time. And then the last time we were here, game one, Rally Cat gotten in the home run structure the next day, a power surge causing the lights to go out in left field. And they had a delay. Chip and Joe, there's never a dull moment here. But I did find out that the Rally Cat has since been adopted by an intern here. They didn't find it until the next day in the concourse, but he's safe in the house. Oh, that's good to know. That's what we like to call Kelsey a perfect ending oh. to the Funny. Rally Cat story. You had a day off yesterday, didn't you? Been writing all this stuff down for weeks, buddy. <laughs> Dietrich made a great play a minute ago. He'll lead off for the fish. I like this guy. Good player. As you said, he can play everywhere. Doesn't mind getting hit. Tough as nails. He's got good numbers like D. Gordon. Great numbers against the Braves, too. And a strike. Two and one the count. Eric's 27. They got him from Tampa Bay for Unel Escobar after the 2012 season. That's a ball out of play foul. Last year was Derek's first full season. He played in 128 games, 42 RBIs, scored 39 runs. Got hit by 24 pitches. He's been plunked once tonight. Struck him out with a laser beam down and away for strike three. Just tip your cap on that one, Derek. 96 on the black at the knees. No chance. Yeah, some guys that wore the Braves uniform in years past made a nice living throwing pitches right there. So Mike off to a good start. Four strikeouts for him tonight. And here's Real Muto. He's lined out twice. That. 85 mile an hour changeup. That was beautiful. He had a big delivery on it, big leg kick, sold it. So, what does he have in mind with a 1 2 pitch? 
Bouncing ball to Phillips at second. He got the high hop. And the play to first in time, two outs. Real Muto 0 for three. Here's Yelich, who's two for two. He's pitching, folks. Looks great. And a good bounce back from that rough outing against St. Louis. Yelich with two singles. And Another that miss downstairs. Another good pitch with it. Change up. him up. That's going to hang in the air for an eternity. Enciarte is underneath it. He's got it. And Fultonevich has a 1 2 3 home fifth. Kemp, Marcakis, and Garcia look to add to a one run Braves lead. the Yankees other than spring training and they had a very impressive spring in the Sunshine State we have seen the Nationals we have seen the Astros I can't say that I've seen a better team top to bottom than that Houston Astros ball club and we saw really their number four and number five starter uh, I still think they're a starting pitcher short uh, of what they need to maybe go all the way but boy oh boy what a good looking team. The Astros start play tonight 24 and 11. They are the only team above 500 in the American League West right now. They have a seven game lead over Seattle out West, and they've won four straight. They see the Yankees tonight. Yeah, everybody out West would say, hey, we're having a pretty good uh, battle here if we just get rid of Houston. The other four teams separated by a game and a half. Told you Minnesota is atop the AL Central. Baltimore a half game ahead of the Yankees. Our next stop after this series is Toronto. We have a two game home and home series coming up with the Blue Jays. Those are your American leaders. American League leaders that is. As Arrhenia misses outside to Kemp. Three balls and a strike for the Braves left fielder who singled and scored ahead of Tyler Flowers home run. Arrhenia is lucky that the score is only two to one as much as he's pitched behind in the count tonight. That's a good defense behind him. And 
as you said so much of the reason for his success last time out was strike one. Not so much tonight. He's issued three walks one of them intentional. He scattered five hits and the flowers homer the difference pitch to Kemp bounce toward Dietrich at third it rolls up his arm. Bare hand try won't be in time and Kemp's aboard to start the Atlanta sixth. Infield hit. All these tough plays for Dietrich and I'm not going to say this one was an easy one it wasn't because he got an in between hop right there. Couldn't come up with it cleanly. But he had no choice but to charge it if he lays back on it he has no play at all. Second hit for Matt tonight. Marquez has two hits. And Arena misses outside. There is action beginning in the Marlins bullpen. Brad Ziegler is up and throwing. Arena chugging toward 100 pitches. And missed ball two. The only reason they took him out after six innings of one hit shutout ball against the Mets was because. It was his first start and they hadn't really stretched him out enough to go any deeper in the ball game. But how efficient was he boy 63 pitches in six innings. In his most recent start. Well he had 60 pitches after three innings tonight. Yeah. So much different performance. For Urania though who's still only given up two runs. Tomorrow night it's game two here in Miami Julio Tehran and Ed Edinson Volquez will square off at Volquez missed some time with a blister on his thumb. R.A. Dickey pitches on Sunday. And then we're off to Toronto 2 and 0 the count. And Marquez takes low 3 and 0. Throw a strike and Arena did. That's headed foul left side over the Miami dugout. We'll do it again. And a fan from Cape Coral, Florida came away with that strike. Oh, that's a nice area. Kemp is running. The pitch is cut on a missed. Real Mutos throws right on the money. And they've got Kemp in a rundown. He goes down a heap. Let's hope he's all right. <laughs> his former teammate, D. Gordon, will lift him to his feet. And Kemp will make his way to Braves' dugout. <laughs> Not without straining. <laughs> To the plate, and now watch D here. I'll help you up, buddy. <laughs> so, two outs, and Adonis Garcia, the batter. 2 1 Atlanta. Good game tonight in Miami. Mike Fulton Evich with four strikeouts, Arena with four strikeouts. Saw Adonis moving very slowly after his last attempt to run the bases. I'm guessing it's that knee that he fouled the ball off of. It's still causing him some discomfort. I think it's his hamstring. Do you? Yeah, I do. And it concerns me that you know he only runs one way, and that's hard. And I'd hate to see it be 
a, a relapse of what happened to him in spring training. He got down the line as quickly as he could. He's able to apply the brakes before he gets the outfield grass there. And the Braves are done in the sixth. The big boppers, I'm told, are coming up for the Marlins. It's 2 1 in the sixth. Miami time for our Toyota tweet of the week this week's question is what has been the biggest story in baseball so far this year tweet us at Fox Sports Braves using the hashtag the big story and your tweet could be used in the Braves live post game show where there have been a lot of big stories already this season a tough one to single out. Marcelo Zuna leads off for Miami he's popped out and struck out Mike Fulton to work in his first is upstairs ball one. Beginning here for Mike. All this thunder. He's still throwing hard. That one at 94. Zuna late on that pitch. Wishes he had it back, perhaps. One and two. Season high in innings pitched in a single game is seven. He did that in back to back starts April 18th and the 23rd. He's gone 10 innings combined in his last two. It's only at the 78 pitch mark, though. It's good. Wow. Right back where it came from. That got full. T. Swanson on the deflection makes the play. And let's check on Fulton Evich. That stung him. You don't see Mike. React too often, but Jeff Porter, the Braves head athletic trainers, out to make sure he's all right. Pointed like to the sole of his shoe. That's the case. That's a real break. Yeah, he lifted his foot up just in time. And a good ricochet. So 1 6 3 the scoring on Ozuna's ground out. Here's Stanton. Giancarlo has singled and has struck out. Strike one. I 
Frank is 14 out of 23 in first pitch strikes in the game. Now that could be a little better, but a lot of the first pitch strikes he has thrown have been breaking balls, and I like that too. Oh, just missed with a slider. One of the things the radar gun does these days is not just tell a pitcher how hard he's throwing or the fans it tells a manager. And that may be why Ian Kroll was up this inning just in case because his velocity has dropped this inning. It was 96 97 earlier tonight. Now he's 93 ish. Yeah. 94. Yeah. He was even 98 in the first inning. Check this might be the warmest and muggiest night that he's pitched so far this year. And it takes a lot of effort out of him. To second, Brandon Phillips gets a high hop. And Stanton's retired. Two away in the sixth. Now let's see if he can solve Justin Bohr, who's two for two with a lone Marlins run, a leadoff homer last time up. Got a hanging breaking ball and hit that into the second deck here. And pulled a change up. First time up, that was a good pitch. Kind of combed that one. Change up. He combed it? Yeah, but the name for that, you know, when you change up down and away and you comb it and you pull it to the right side, that's called a comb over. Oh, my <laughs> A highly technical term. You bring it from <laughs> bring it from the other side over to the other. Well, that's a big comb in the batter's box. I'll tell you that. Justin Bohr's a moose. Comb over. Two balls, no strikes. How Mike is pacing his pitches. He's not just rushing to get the ball right. to get a sign and fire away at will. He's thinking it over. Good point. And he continues to pitch here in the sixth inning. He hasn't thrown him a live fastball yet. Let's see if he thinks about one here with a 2 2 count. Good spot. Good pitch. Best fastball of the inning. So now what does he do with a full count? Backdoor curveball. Oh, Blister a fastball in there. And it was a fastball, it was a 94 fastball to um, Stanton, too, got him to ground out. I think you're seeing him right at the peg on empty. And he's given everything he's got right here. And Moore muscled up, fought that one off at 96. Mike Spot is due third in the seventh, so it makes sense. With a 2 1 lead, you might go to the pen and the bench here. 106 is his pitch high, and that was that seven inning stint against the Nationals. Now the 3 2 pitch. Rounded to second. Phillips retreats and it's under his glove. And Bohr's aboard with a two out error. It was that close to having a 1 2 3 6. Now we'll have to throw a few more if he's allowed. Brandon had his glove turned like a backhand. Two outs, so it you wouldn't think it's that costly 
except in the effort or the physical effort that Mike has to put into another out. And we saw this happen to him in Milwaukee with two out. And Domingo Santana hit a three run homer that cost him the game. But here you've got Lombardozzi, then the pitcher's spot. And with that in mind, Ichiro Suzuki is on deck if Lombardozzi can reach. He's 0 for 2 and 0 for 7 since putting on the Marlins uniform. And that missed high. One ball, no strikes. Third error by Phillips. One ball, one strike. Really would love to see Mike finish this inning himself. Walk off that mound feeling 10 feet tall. Four extra pitches now. And a ground ball to Phillips who gets a redeemer. He will field cleanly and throw to first and Fultis through six with a one run lead. 2 1 Atlanta in front. 7 8 9 on the lineup card coming up. Tremendous steps forward even in the early days of this 2017 season. How about the pitches Mike Fulton Evich had to make tonight protecting a one run lead. Well I love the fact that after the error he just went right back to work on Lombardozzi and got the out and able to walk off no walks he did hit a batter. Uh, I'm assuming they will hit for him this inning because it appeared to me anyway that he was running on fumes there at the end of the sixth inning but terrific job more good signs from him and it's great to see. So Fulton Evich outdueling Jose Urania. The Marlins right hander will step aside. Brad Ziegler is coming on to pitch, and Ziegler's had a rough last five appearances for the Marlins. Yeah, he's been knocked around. You see his arm angle, side armor, low to upper 80s sinker, slider, and a changeup. Flowers one for two tonight. One a very big blow. In fact, it's our Yellowwood bringing the lumber feature. Yeah, and he almost hit another one out his next time up. Pulled it right into the left field corner. But this one, bell tie and ripped. It was low and bounced right off the top of the fence. Got him. 
So Flowers is hit by a pitch. He's the Braves version of Derek Dietrich. He's not afraid to lean into one. He had a good start for the Braves in the seventh, trying to extend a 2 1 lead. That looked like that hit him right in the knee, though, didn't that hurt? God. He's a catcher, though. He's used to it. Ain't nothing. <laughs> Fourth time he's been hit uh, in 2017. And immediately, Ziegler in trouble. At the start of the year, it was thought that the strength of the Marlins team was going to be their relief core. They know they have some shortages in rotation. And that's proven to be true. What's been so disappointing for Miami is how often their pitchers in relief are giving up runs. 14 homers in 128 innings. 120 hits, 58 walks. I mean, they have base runners all over the place. In relief for Don Mattingly. Well, this guy came into a game uh, a few days ago at New York, and he faced six guys, and they all got hits, and five of them scored, and it all happened so fast that they couldn't get anybody else up to come in and relieve him. Tap at a time or two to the Braves as well this year, so Atlanta can understand that pain. But this year, Miami, three for nine in saves. They have three saves. They've blown six of them. And I think they've blown a bunch of leads in their last five games as well, including right. two against the Cardinals. Right. And nothing breaks your heart more than a blown lead late. One ball, one strike for Dansby, who has struck out and has been walked intentionally. The pitch right back up the middle. Gordon can't smother it. It's into center field, and Swanson's got a hit. This is it. Streak is up to four games. And Ziegler's got some troubles. A hit batsman and a base hit. And Emilio Bonifacio's coming up with two on and nobody out. The Braves in business for some insurance. Good job by Dansby to stay on that pitch. It was low, but out over the plate. And you've got a second baseman trying to. Play shortstop. Couldn't get his glove down to get that. So good for Dansby. He's aboard. And here's Bonifacio. We know he can punt. Wants to push it to third, make Dietrich field it. Pickoff play instead to second and just back ahead of the throw is Tyler Flowers. Ronnie Washington saw that all the way. Anytime the first and third baseman start crashing in and the shortstop starts running to third, you know that the pickoff's on, and Ronnie Washington was yelling right away. Down in Houston, Bonifacio had a sacrifice bunt. He also had a bunt single. Jerry Lane was checking to see if the Marlins wanted to take a look at that play at second. They don't. Swinging that time and he didn't get it. Strike one. Well, there's a good chance that Ziegler is going to throw you a pitch that is as a left handed hitter sinking which makes it easier to bunt. And running away from you, which makes it easier to push it to third. But with them crashing in on him, Bonifacio decided to swing. And that was a slider. it down and it's a beauty. Ziegler's got one play and he makes it to first Bonifacio with his third beautiful punt in the last two Braves games. So Flowers at third Swanson at second on the sacrifice and 
Ender and Ciarte is coming up. When you don't play every day, when you don't play, but maybe once every time you play an American League team with a DH, <laughs> as is the case with Emilio, you got to do the little things right when asked when you do get an opportunity, and that's a beauty. So let's see what Miami has in mind here. Ender and Ciarte. Fours about 15 feet away. They're going to put him on. And yes, they're going to intentionally walk him. They wanted to wait a few moments. And that'll set things up for Brandon Phillips. Space is loaded, one out. Well, the Braves have their chance now. Leading 2 1. You're a ground ball guy, and they're, they're hoping for a ground ball to get out of this. Second at bat of the year for Phillips with the bases loaded. The pitch to him is well off the plate. Ball one. He's had good luck against Ziegler. Brandon's hit the ball on the ground twice tonight and has walked. Freeman waits on deck. Up the middle, a base hit. Flowers scores. Dansby's flying around third. Yelich's throw comes to third. It's off target. And Brandon Phillips with a run scoring hit. Extends the Atlanta lead to four to one. And he adds to the misery of Ziegler, not only personally, but from the way Brandon has worked him over. Well, this throw from Yelich, he had a play at third. This throw was so far off the mark, no trouble. So Ziegler retires one of the first five hitters assigned him in the seventh inning. Don Mattingly is going to make a double switch. And we'll tell you who's coming in to relieve and who's coming in to play second base as Lombardozzi checks out. 4-1 Atlanta. We're in the seventh. Playoff actions heating up over in the NHL with the Nashville Predators in their first Western Conference final appearance. We've got your Preds post game analysis with Terry Crisp and Lindsey Rowley on Predators Live Playoffs Edition here on Fox Sports South at 12 30, 11 30 Central. Tune in after the Preds game one action. Double switch for Miami. JT Riddle checks in to the game. He'll play shortstop. D. Gordon moves over to second base. And Kyle Baraclaw is on to pitch. He's going to face Freddie Freeman with two in, two on, and one out in the Atlanta seventh. Bearclaw always tough. 
mid 90s fastball slider and a change up good action on his fastball hard to pick up 16 strikeouts in 15 innings but also 11 11 walks. Miracle claw got clobbered on May 9th four runs three hits in a third of an inning against St. Louis including two bases on balls. So that's an all too familiar theme. Big time strikeout arm in relief but he sometimes doesn't know where the ball's going. Here's Freeman. And that one way outside ball one. A fly ball gets you another run. One out. Ball two. Tom Glavin said this a million times. There's a base open. It happens to be second base. You've got Kemp on deck, a right hand hitter. Didn't offer, ball three. You'll offer here if it's a good pitch. Raves have cashed in and a hit batsman and a single by Swanson. Now Freeman ahead in the count three and oh. He took it at the knees. No answers yet for Don Mattingly. Mourinho pitched a pretty good ball. Two runs in six innings. Ziegler's given up two here in the seventh. Braves lead 4-1. And what a stop by Real Muto. That saved a run. And Freeman's walked. And that loads the bases for Kemp. And Don Mattingly can only hope that Kemp doesn't do serious damage right here in a three-run deficit. Last seven games for their bullpen. 11 walks in 23 and a third innings. High average, high ERA. I don't know who you happen to call on on any particular night that can throw some strikes for you. So they're loaded for Matt. Ball one. I would guess with the lead you have the luxury of making this guy throw you strikes. Sure. He's tough enough under any conditions but when he's the guy that's in trouble and trying to prevent more runs from scoring be patient. All two and Real Muto another meeting. That was a pretty good pitch, but he didn't get the call. And that might be why. That graphic right there. Yeah, and that one strike was a 3 0 count to Freeman. Two balls, no strikes. He can have a teacup size strike zone. Three and oh. Another bad one means a run. At the very bottom of the zone, called a strike. All bets are off now. Ciarte, Phillips, and Freeman, the Braves runners. In the same spot and the same call, full count. Okay, those are two miraculous pitches in this situation. He didn't get the call on that pitch on the slider in that same spot, but he has called those two fastballs.
Now the payoff for Matt. And he struck him out. What a comeback. From 3 0 with the bases loaded, Kemp didn't like strike one or strike two. And he swings over strike three for the second out. But Barraclaw not out of the soup yet. Nick Markakis is coming up. Nick with a two hit night. And the perfect Nick Markakis spot two outs and runners in scoring position. Ball missed. Nick batting 292 with runners in scoring position, 11 RBIs. Four one, Braves lead it. Way off the bag at third base, Ender can get a huge lead on anything that might bounce away from Rio Muto. Good pitch evens the count. and a strike. There have been no answers on the other end of that phone line. For the Marlins. That's Brian Ellington up now. Barraclaw had spun around. They had a great opportunity for a pickoff at second. Real Muto's picked off two guys at second, so be a alert to that too, the catcher. Phillips a huge lead at second. A check of Riddle behind him. Two balls and a strike. Again, the young shortstop backs in, and I believe they've called a balk. They have. Barraclaw box in. Ender in Ciarte to make it 5-1. That helps. So the runners move up 90 feet. Third run allowed by Ziegler. Yeah, lifted up his foot a little bit and put it back down. Two balls and a strike for Marcakis. Eighth man to hit in the inning. And he takes low, three and one. Garcia waits on deck. In four out of the seven innings tonight, the Braves have had multi men on base. They scored two in the second. They've got three so far here in the seventh. And Nick takes a walk. They're loaded again. Another meeting on the mound. There's three walks and a hit batsman in this inning. So far, three runs on two hits for the Braves, who will send nine to the plate in the seventh inning. And while we have a moment, we remind you that. It's time to come on out to SunTrust Park and enjoy yourself. The best ticket value on weeknights at the ballpark is starting in May at just $5 for matchups with Blue Jays May 17th and 18th and the Pittsburgh Pirates May 22nd through the 25th. Get your seats today at Braves.com slash tickets. Eric Law has thrown 17 pitches. He's thrown five strikes. The 
big swing by Adonis. He didn't get it. One ball, one strike count. Yeah, did him a favor there. Kind of made up his mind to swing, thinking he'd get another fastball. Had a good rip at that one and found it off. One and two. Chop toward third. Dietrich plays it off the heel of his glove. Throw to first is going to be late. And the Braves get another run. Dietrich made a sensational play earlier in the game, but he's had trouble with a couple of choppers to the hot corner tonight. And Atlanta adds a fourth run in the seventh. And this one's being scored in E5. I think that's an accurate call. Braves will take the freebies, the balk, and the error. And the Marlins are going to need a third pitcher to get a third out in what's been a disastrous seventh for them, but a great seventh for the Braves. Four runs are across, 6 1. Here's your score. Mobile. Let's check out what's happening around the major leagues. You talked about great stories in Major League Baseball. The Orioles and Dodgers certainly are, and the hot stretch of play by the St. Louis Cardinals is certainly noteworthy as well. Yeah, the guy Dylan Bundy, a former first round pick for the Orioles, has battled a lot of injuries early in his career, but he is pitching lights out this year. And the Cardinals, after they swept the Braves, came right down here to Miami, swept the Marlins. They are on a roll and have moved into first in the central and yeah, they've got a chance to make a statement tonight. They've got the Cubs head to head. In fact St. Louis has Chicago in fourth place in the National League Central. The Cubs are two and a half games back. So the Cardinals and Cubbies get after it. And Brian Ellington's on. This is only his second game. And he inherits a mess. Bases loaded still two outs. He's got Tyler Flowers up there and the Braves have already pushed across four runs in the inning. They've done that on just two hits. Well, he's got a chance to make an impression in his second outing, that's for sure, to get them out of this inning. Throws hard. Upper 90s fastball with a slider and a change. He was called up on Sunday through two and a third innings in relief on Monday against the Cardinals. And he's got Flowers, who has a home run tonight. Way up and away, Ooh. ball one. It was a 16th round draft pick. Played one season at Florida State College in Jacksonville. And then transferred to a Division II school in West Florida. Pop back our way, headed for the Marlins booth. And Todd Hollinsworth with a spectacular catch made the play. That was outstanding. I mean, he has made the transition from uh -huh. player 
to the booth and Dave Van Horn the Hall of Fame voice of the Marlins tells us that's the first time a foul ball has ever gotten into the booth at Marlins Park. That sky down the right side not a play foul. So it's been a long time between chances for the guys up here but Hollinsworth made the play. Well you know us broadcast types Joe are excellent fielders. <laughs> Todd in his, first, in his first year as the analyst on Fox Sports Florida with our pal Rich Waltz. They make a good team. And a great catch here in the Atlanta seventh. One and two. Powers the tenth man to hit. Spit on that pitch. Well, here's where Barraclaw, excuse me, Ellington wants action. Doesn't want to go to a 3 2 pitch. Ellington was in 32 games last year for these guys. 245 ERA, so it's not like his first trip up here. Well, he's gone full. Again, like Barraclaw, throwing hard, but right now I'm having trouble with the image. Runners will go with two outs, three balls, two strikes. Here it is. And Flowers, a shot to right field, a base hit. One run scores. Here comes Marquecas around, ball cut off. And the Braves are wailing away in Miami. They now lead it by an 8 1 score. What a great night for Tyler Flowers. Fell behind on that at bat. One and two, got it full, got a fastball, laced it. Two more RBIs, a four RBI night for him. Braves eight, Miami one. Man, is this fun? And Hensby takes the ball low. One ball, no strikes. There have been three walks and a hit batsman in this inning. They've all scored. And the batter who reached on an error is at second base. Fly ball to left. Ozuna is going to gather that one in. And the Braves had a very successful seventh inning. They score six times. We head to the stretch. Atlanta in game one leads eight to one. Eight to one, and if you'd like to take home a piece of the game from opening day at SunTrust Park, well, you can bid now on game used jerseys, helmets, locker nameplates, and more at Braves.com/auction. A portion of the proceeds benefit the Braves Foundation. The auction ends this Sunday at 8 p.m. So place your bid today at Braves.com/auction.
auction. Six runs on three hits, two walks, a hit batsman, an error, and a balk. I'd say that's spreading the pain around. You bet. Ian Kroll has gotten himself into a nice little groove here. His last three outings, one inning each, a total of only two hits, no runs, no walks, which is important to him, and two strikeouts. He's only given up one run in his last five outings. So JT Riddle was put in the lineup for the Marlins in this spot. And the first pitch from Ian Kroll just drilled the Marlins pinch hitter, Mike Avilas, who they just signed. So not what you want to do with a seven run lead. Welcome back to the big leagues. Got the elbow guard and then the mask of Tyler Flowers. The Gordon bats. He's bounced out. He's hit into a double play. And Gordon takes a ball. One ball, no strikes. Mike Fulton Evich, six innings, six hits, a run, no walks, four strikeouts tonight. And a liner caught by Adonis. Laser throw to first, and they double up Avilas. What a play by Adonis Garcia. In on the grass, hot shot, quick reactions, and a good throw. So just like that, two are outs. The Marlin hit, Marlins have hit the two double plays tonight. And here's Dietrich. He's over two. He's been hit by a pitch. And trying to get the wave going. As the Marlins hit in the seventh with two outs. Right there for a strike. For the Braves tonight. They took a 2 0 lead in the second and they've led the entire night. Something they have not enjoyed much over the last week. Braves in business trying to snap a six game dry run. They're in their 12th win. Popped up left side. Dansby a long run. Kemp a long run. Foul ground and they run out of room. One of the good things about the top half of the inning was that the Braves only had two runs in and there were two outs and a chance for the Marlins to escape and keep them within three and the Braves went on to score four runs. That was huge. Four runs more in the inning. Tyler with the capper. Cole now with a 3 2 count for Dietrich. And he gets a ground ball right off the first base bag. And Dietrich has some good luck at the plate. Freddie was ready to make the play, but it hit the bag, and Dietrich's aboard with his first hit of the night. That's some tough luck for Ian Kroll. So 
Bunny Dietrich is wearing out left handed pitchers. Not that that was necessarily wearing anybody out, but I think he's like eight for 12 against lefties. And we talk about pitchers having rever reverse splits. Uh -huh. Dietrich's the same way at the plate. So Real Muto's up with two outs, and he unloads on the first pitch, and that's crushed deep toward left field and into the Atlanta bullpen. Wouldn't that just like it? Anybody's got a right to shake their head right now. It's Ian Kroll. Got to be kidding me. Better high fastball though. Inner third of the plate. Terrific swing by the catcher. His third home run and only his second and third RBIs in his home park. Marlins strike for two with two outs. It's an 8 3 game now. And here's Yelich who takes the ball high. 1 0. Enthusiastic crowd tonight in Miami 20,052. They answer the Braves six run seventh with two themselves with two outs. Line to second and Phillips a step for two to his right makes the play and that retires the side two runs on two hits it's eight three Atlanta as we get set to go to the eighth first we join Jerome Jurinovich for tonight's big story. With Matt Harvey in the Bat Cave, otherwise known as Miller Park, where the Brewers hit a ton of home runs. We'll talk all about that and tonight's game with you on Braves Live, presented by Xfinity, as we move to inning number eight. Danny Santana grabs a bat, and he is going to lead things off. Ian Kroll. Pitched an inning, two hits, two runs, a homer, and a hit batsman. Ellington back to work for the fish. And ball one to Santana. The six runs scored by the Braves an inning ago is their highest single inning total of the year. 
and their second highest runs scored in any inning that they've played in Marlins Park since April 7th 2015 when they scored seven times in one frame in that ball game. Not surprising because this has always been a place where the Braves have usually played very well. What was the date on that? Uh, April 7th 2015. Yeah, I was wondering if that was when uh, Jace Peterson hit his hit a grand slam here. Might have been. And Santana locks on four pitches, and this is an all too familiar theme for Don Mattingly and his staff. Their bullpen keeps getting in its own way. So Mike Avilas checks into play shortstop for the Marlins. I guess that means that JT Riddle is good enough to play defensively, but not swing the bat. Remember, he came in and played defense last inning. But couldn't hit. Which is kind of odd. It's his right pinky finger, or index finger rather. And you'd think it'd be harder for him to throw than to hit. And CRT takes a strike. It's nothing in one. In the Marlins right now, a shadow of their opening day selves with Prado, Rojas, Riddle, and Echeverria all hurt or hurting. Get Volquez back from the DL tomorrow. He'll face Julio Tehran in game two. That would call the strike, much to Ender's dismay. Never had the plate. Swing and a miss. Cinciarte with a look back at the umpire. Both he and Matt Kemp have disagreed with Mr. Basner's strike zone tonight, but his opinion's the only one that counts, unfortunately. One on, one out. Don Mattingly was talking before the ball game about um, he got thrown out of a couple of games this past week when the Cardinals were in town, and he said there were some pitches that were certainly questionable. And he said, I've told my guys, you know, if an umpire calls a strike on a borderline pitch, you say, now, did that have the corner, or you know, by how much? And he said, then, if they throw a pitch out there that's a little more off the plate, you let him know that was an inch and a half off the plate. He said, I did that a lot, and they would look at me like, oh, this guy's got, <laughs> he sees pretty good. Laser vision, yeah. yes. <laughs> How much of that goes on in a batter's box? I mean, you stood there. How much? Not much for me. I mean, other than to complain that it wasn't a strike. No balls at a strike for Phillips. Brandon with a big hit tonight. Two runs scoring single last time up in the seventh. We had some umpires though, and we were talking about this in this discussion that I remember. Remember Chuck Merriweather? Uh huh. I remember requesting a call by Chuck one time, and he says, "Okay, Joe, I'll give it a better look next time." Well, what are you going to say to that? Thank you. Okay. Right. Or hey, sorry, I missed that one. Right. Once they apologize. Yes. It's still a strike, but yeah. But as Don said, that was in the old days. Ah. You don't get that type of response anymore. Interesting. It's more contra, more conflict oriented. Oh, and two to Phillips. Ellington wants to take a moment, so does Real Muto. Six runs for the Braves in the seventh, two for the Marlins, eight three the totals to this point. Now, the way, I mean, there's not, all, not always just one aggrieved party at the plate. Sometimes you'll see and hear the catcher saying something to the umpire. But most of the time, they're looking straight at the pitcher, so the only people in the ballpark who know are the hitter, the umpire, and the catcher that any complaining is going on. Right. Santana, a good lead at first. And Phillips didn't get it. There's a strikeout, two are away. Back to back strikeouts for Ellington, who's got a good arm. 
There was an umpire once that called a strike on uh, called a ball a pitch a ball and the catcher complained. And the umpire said to me Joe he's right that was a pretty good pitch. And at least let me know that if he puts one there again it's going to be a strike. Uh, isn't that what the, the point you just yeah. want to know. Yeah. What's a strike. Batter beware. At least he let me know. Freeman the hitter. And he cues one down the third base line. That's beautiful. Santana on his way to third base. And he's going to be stopped there. Freddie Freeman ruins the shift with an opposite field double for his first hit in the series. You could draw a big grin from Freddie on that one. With some English on it too. Nice. Nine doubles for Freeman. Braves aren't done. Here's Matt Kemp. Two hits, a pop out, and a strikeout. And rest assured, Matt will be aggressive early in the count <laughs> if they let him swing. Right. He was ahead in the count, three and zero oh in the seventh, and then ended up striking out. Got two borderline pitches called against him in that sequence. That one over the screen foul, 0 and 1. So Matt will take a 12 game hit streak into play tomorrow night. More good work for Kemp in this ballpark. This where historically he's swung it very well. Get a breaking ball. It's one and two. He's throwing hard. He's at his fastball at 97, even though he walked the first guy of the inning. He's throwing hard and got a decent slider. One and two, the count. Somehow he checked his swing, I think, and that's correct. Two and two. Yeah, the bat barely left his shoulder. Now the three two pitch for Kemp. Struck him out. Ellington struck out the side, gave up a walk and a double to Freeman. Home eighth coming up. It's 8 3, Braves in front.
Catch the games on TV. You can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app and take Fox Sports South and Braves baseball with you wherever you go. It's presented by Nissan. Danny Santana stays in the game. He'll replace Matt Kemp with the lead five runs. Santana part of a double switch. Jose Ramirez comes on to face the four five and six hitters in the Miami eighth. This guy's been a revelation hadn't he. 120 ERA in 15 innings. Gave up an unearned run two outings ago but that was the first one since April 9th. How about the job the Braves have done on Ozuna tonight. This guy was one of the hottest hitters in the league and Atlanta silenced him. In fact, Ozuna's not gotten the ball out of the infield yet. It's behind the count here, no balls at the strike. Good pitch. He didn't get it. One and two. Yeah, he took something off. We've been seeing him do that more and more, and boy, is it effective. 87 mile an hour changeup. Swing and a miss. Slider up in the zone. They've got a little spot up there on him. Letter high and he couldn't connect. Osuna strikes out for the second time. Here's Giancarlo Stanton. He's one for three with a strikeout. Up and in. Always a concern for Stanton. Remember, he was horrifically hit in the face a couple of years ago. That's why he wears that flap on his. Batting helmet. It's hit with the upper deck. Well foul. Strike one. Back our way and out of play. One and two. Well, maybe tonight's the night the Braves will start another winning streak. If there has been a streakier team in baseball than Atlanta this year, I'd like to know which one it is. True. After starting the year one and one, the Braves lost five in a row, then won five in a row, lost six in a row. A four game winning streak. Tonight, trying to snap a six game slide. Harry Hill, the Marlins' first base coach and an excellent infield instructor with terrific fundamental play. And a fan in the front row with that foul ball. Two and two. Right back up the middle. Stanton rips a 97 mile an hour fastball. And that's his second hit of the game. So here's power versus power. Ramirez versus Justin Bohr, who's hit one of the two Marlins homers tonight. Interesting to watch. Top of the zone didn't get the call. He's been calling that pitch all night. That one right there evens the count. Bores the pride of George Mason University.
25th round of the draft, 25th round pick by the Cubs in 2009. Marlins took him as a Rule 5 pick after the 2013 season. Two years ago, had a 23 homer year, but he's never played more than 129 games in a season. That's one thing that's played the Marlins. Health. Stanton's missed a lot of time. This guy's missed a lot of time. He didn't miss that fastball. He ripped it in right field. So two are on with one out. Stanton and Bohr, the base runners. I'll tell you what, there have not been too many hitters get around uh, and Jose Ramirez. Both of these two sluggers have done just that. I think that was a changeup that Bohr hit. That's the second time tonight he's home to change up. Yeah you're right. It's still hard for me to say a change up at 90 miles an hour is that pitch. A lot of guys throw that for their fastball. But Bohr didn't miss it. And now Ichiro's coming up two on with one man out. Marlins had some interesting travel to deal with this year as well. They had a crazy road trip that took them to Seattle, San Diego, Philly, and then back home. They covered over 7,000 miles on that road trip. But it was an emotional return for Ichiro Suzuki to Seattle. He takes high ball one. Get a home run there. How about that? On April 19th. Foul back to the screen. Next to Ken Griffey Jr., probably the most popular Mariner ever. And they had a cool bobblehead night, I think, for him. It was a Marlins and Mariners bobblehead. Like a double headed bobblehead of each row, wearing oh. both uniforms. Celebrate his 3,000th hit in Miami and his great career in Seattle. And he takes high ball two. 4,315 hits between the Japanese and Major League Baseball leagues. He's in the top 50 all time in games played. And he wants to keep playing after this year. And who's to say he can? Remarkable, remarkable player. Two balls, two strikes. And a swing and a miss. Each row didn't get it. After the back to back Marlins hits, Ramirez strikes out Suzuki, and Avilas is coming up. For Suzuki, hitting under 200, if he wants to continue to play, and I know he'd probably say, hey, let me give me some more consistent at bats, and then I'll hit better. It may be a chore for him to do more than what he's doing right now, and that's. Be a fifth outfielder. Alvinas takes the ball inside. One ball, no strikes. I remember Mike was a brave for a day. I'd forgotten. Made the Tigers opening day roster appeared in 68 games was traded to the Braves August 16th and was designated for assignment the very next day. Atlanta. There for the taking, and the Marlins scooped him up. Mike spent time with Kansas City, Boston, Cleveland, and Detroit last year, where he hit 210. Was he with anyone this year before the Marlins signed him? I don't believe so. He's kind of like some other guys. I was reading about Doug Fister. Who did not catch on with the team for spring training, and he's out there available for anyone that wants him. I'll fly back out of play. It's and two two. Apparently, are there are some teams that are interested in him. 
pitched in Houston last year. Let's see if Ramirez can end it right here. Two and two the count. Pitch number six of this sequence. Hanging in there. Do you have Avilas's bio there? I do. Was it him involved in a trade that involved a manager? I'll have to look. I may be confusing him with someone else. I know Randy Wynn was. That was the deal for Lou Pinella years ago in Seattle. First the pitch, which stayed high. 100 miles an hour. We'll finish it right here. Don't give them any ideas of making some crazy comeback. Driven toward right. Markakis is there. He's got it. And that takes care of Miami in the eighth inning. No runs, two hits, two left. We head to the ninth. Becoming a common theme here in Braves country. Don't miss your chance to see the next incredible play up close in the home run port seats for just $11. When the Braves take on the Blue Jays and the Pirates later this month, visit Braves.com slash flash by midnight tonight and get your tickets. Braves are three outs away from ending a six game losing streak. They've overpowered the Marlins to this point by an 8 3 score. Nick Whitgren is on to pitch for Miami. He's their fifth man to work. Tonight. Fastball slider change. Fastball in the low 90s. Eight games. He's actually only walked two guys by comparison to the rest of their relief staff. That's microscopic. And Joe, you're right about Mike Avilas. He was involved in a deal for a major league manager. He went to Cleveland with Jan Gomes from Toronto for Esmil Rogers and then was acquired by Toronto from Boston for David Carpenter and John Farrell for the 2013 season. I don't know why that stuck with me but I always think it's fascinating that you can trade a player for a manager. A 
a strike for Nick Markakis, if I'm not mistaken. Back in the day, a team once traded a player for a broadcaster, Ernie Harwell. Uh huh. But you have that no trade clause, so I think you're okay. No balls and a strike. I tell you, the only claws I have are bear claws. They get stuck right here. Yes, they do. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> Eight runs, ten hits for Atlanta, three ten and one for Miami. Mike Fulton Evich pitched a great game. And don't be fooled by the score. He was out of the game when Atlanta erupted for the six runs. He had to pitch a long time tonight with a two one lead and did an excellent job in doing just that. So we got some run support. Braves need three more outs. As Marquez has chased one, didn't get it. The last four outs have been via the strikeout by the Marlins bullpen, Ellington and Whitgren. And there's the first out of the ninth. Adonis in 0 for 4 tonight, but he's had a couple of good plays at third base. Straight back, strike one. <laughs> to right and Stanton he gallops to his left. He's got it. And two are out. In the Marlins ninth, they'll have Gordon, Dietrich, and Real Muto coming up. But first things first, Tyler Flowers, who's had a big night. Four RBIs matches his career high. He's homered, and he scored two runs. And you're getting great production out of their catching tandem of Tyler Flowers and Kurt Suzuki. Combined 291 batting average is good for third in the big leagues. That's impressive. And now 20 RBIs between the two of them. And he's hit both hard, both balls hard. Home run to left center was just smoked on a line. Oh and two. Johnson will get some work, it appears. And he hasn't pitched much. Last on May the 7th. And only twice since the start of play May 3rd. 0 oh 2, two outs, bases empty, ninth inning. a little breathing room to work and pitch. Add on runs to give the offense a little freedom to go up there and free swing. Work the counts a little bit and more importantly to try and snap a six game losing streak. Tough here in the ninth, two and two. And 
and a swing and a miss. Will retire the side. Impressive work by Ellington and Whitgren. But we head to the last of the ninth, and Jim Johnson will try to finish it off. Of headlines in Atlanta tomorrow, but let's not overlook the great work by Mike Fulton Evich, who's in line for his first victory of the season. Outstanding work. He got some run support for a change, and that made a huge difference for him. He got two runs to work with in the second inning. So he had a little breathing room. And when he did it, he get in some tough spots. He went to work. Great pitch right here. Again, 96 on the black at the knees. Four strikeouts, no walks. The only run was a home run by Boer. So Jim Johnson will get some work. As Joe mentioned, he hasn't had a lot of that during the Braves' six game dry spell. Let's see if he can make quick work of the 9 1 and 2 hitters for Miami, and then we'll set our sights on Julio Tehran in game two tomorrow night. And Julio's due to have a good start. Julio's five and four in his career against the Marlins. He'll make his 16th start against them here tomorrow night. Braves live at 6:30. First pitch at 7:10. Haven't you enjoyed this night tonight? I mean, the the roof open and everything. Loved it. It's a totally different place. <laughs> Strike three. Gordon is frozen. He's retired on three pitches. One out. I especially like it because the Braves scored eight runs. Tonight. Yeah, that helps. Boy, Johnson just sliced and diced up the Gordon right there. Fastball, change up, fastball. Thank you. So Gordon at 0 for Fortnite with a strikeout and two double plays. Another strike. This one to Dietrich. Center field. Ender will turn, and that one's gone. Dietrich with a long homer to right center. His first of the year. We talked about how he hits lefties better than righties. He got big time extension on that baby and hit it way out. Hanging curveball. I thought for a second he did it with his eyes closed. Out there into the hedge. A couple of years ago, that would have been off the wall. Uh huh. Remember they moved the fences in to help these Marlins hitters. Right. But make no mistake, that was not a cheapie. That was hit a long way. It's 392 to the edge of the Marlins bullpen, so it's got to be. 
400 feet to where Dietrich hit that ball. It's not a little further. It's 407 to straightaway send. To short. As we got a Sunday hop on Friday night, makes the play. Real Muto's retired. And the Braves run out of way. Yelich two hits. He's also popped out and lined out. The two hits were first and third inning singles. Last year the Marlins were down near the bottom of the league in home runs as you might imagine because of the spaciousness of this park. But they're in the middle of the pack now coming into this game tonight. They've hit three of them tonight. They have 42 homers now for Miami 34 for the Braves. With their home ERA they were last in the major leagues coming into this game at 6.42. I don't know exactly how many of the runs are earned tonight, but a bunch. Well, just imagine if imagine if they played in a smaller park with the pitching problems they had. Ooh. That's the terrifying thing, I'm sure, for Miami. But if there is some hope for them, I would assume at the trading deadline. There are supposedly going to be a flood of starting pitchers available. I would assume there'll be a lot of them available in the offseason. And I would think that's going to be job one for them. Improve this starting staff. Tonight, Urania wasn't the problem. He only gave up two runs. He battled mm -hmm. and gave up two on a night where it didn't appear he had his A stuff. Yeah, I was impressed with him. Toward left. Santana is there. He's got it. And the Braves have snapped their six game losing streak. Big night for Tyler Flowers, four RBIs. Big night for his battery mate, Mike Fultonevich, who's in the win column for the first time in 2017. A nice way to start the weekend in Miami, Joe, at 8 4. Braves win. Just getting that off their shoulders. You know, they've got two more games here in a place where they played well. Let's hope this is a start of a good run. Atlanta 8, Miami 4. Mike Fulton earns his first win. Urania suffers his first loss. And Atlanta will go for their second straight win tomorrow behind Julio Tehran. We'll talk about that.